Are you ready for our easiest block? I promise, easy. <laughs> Hey everyone, Kristen Som here, and I have a really easy block for you today. So if you did your penguin block, then it's time to move on. And it is honestly our easiest block of this whole project. So for today, we are going to do the four square block. I think that's what it's called, four square block. So remember, we're following, pretty much following the, um, the design of the Lucky Us pillow, the St. Patrick's Day pillow, and they have a four square block on there. They actually have three of them. So we're going to start with one of them. And so all you have to do is cut out two and a half inch blocks. You can do four different fabrics or two different fabrics, whatever works for you. On the Lucky Us pillow, they have two different and they have a row of them. So do it however you want to do it i have i am doing two different fabrics as you can see and they're two and a half inches block two and a half inch blocks and i did back mine with fusible stabilizer i've decided that i wanted to do that um a couple of reasons one is it's already my whole pillow block is like that so i want to keep it that way but also I find that it doesn't pull in as much and it makes it so that it'll be the right size at the end. So that's my, my decision. That's what I'm doing. So I did back them with fusible stabilizer, each of the four blocks. So on your fabric. So if you remember, I showed you my focal fabric at the, at the beginning of this project, this is my focal fabric and I'm using this for my flange. You can do it however you want to do it, but I've also decided to add it into one of my blocks just to pull out that color or that design. That's my choice. That's what I'm going to do. You don't have to do that. You can use something completely different than what you've already been using, but I decided on my four square um, blocks on, on the block that is the four square block, I'm going to use my, um, my focal fabric. So I'm doing that. Um, and then I was going to use this one with it. I thought that would be super pretty. And then I decided, no, I'm going to save this one for my inner border. And so I, and this block, by the way, is going to touch that. This is going to be right up at the top, um, next to our first snowman and are what was uh, the snowflake so it'll be next to those and so right up at the top so if I did this then it's this next to this so I decided not to do that so just start thinking about you know your design and how you want yours to be and I haven't used this stripe fabric yet and so I decided to go with the stripes so it's the Kimberbell I think this was from vintage boardwalk actually but so I'm doing it this way. I did back them with fusible stabilizer. You need four pieces at two and a half inches. And you want to be careful when you're cutting these because you want them to be precise. Because at the end, after we put those together, then we are going to quilt it. So if, if you know, if you remember from other blocks um, that are similar, like the pinwheels or, or there was something else on Love Notes, uh, the X and the O's, they, they tend to pull in and they don't end up being the full four and a half inches. And I have a little tip for you. If you find that after you sew yours together, they're not actually four and a half inches. What you can do is add a piece of fusible stabilizer on the back of all four squares. If you didn't put them on the individual ones. Um, I did that on love notes. I put after I sewed mine together and then, um, I quilted it and it, it wasn't the full four and a half inches that it should have been. And so I put a piece of fusible stabilizer on the back that was four and a half inches, and then it gave me my seam allowance still. So that's a little tip if you choose to do that. But um, these days I've just been backing my pieces with fusible stabilizer, and then it doesn't pull in as much and it ends up being the right size. So we're gonna sew those together and then we're gonna quilt it. And so since we're gonna quilt it, you're gonna want batting and I, cut my batting to five by five because we're going to use a four by four quilting design. So we want five by five batting. So on the quilting, you can use any four by four quilting design. I've decided I'm going to use the winter 
from uh, our clear blue tiles. So remember, um, those of us that did the clear blue tiles table runner together, um, we got the essential set that comes with all of these quilting designs on it. And they came on the USB stick that's in only, it's only in the essential set. You can't get these designs at Kimberbell.com like the others. This one was exclusive to the clear blue tiles. So if you have the clear blue tiles, don't forget about your quilting designs if you choose to use them for this project. I'm gonna use winter. Um, it's the one with the swirls and the snowflakes. I thought that'd be really cute. Um, but again, if you didn't get the clear blue tiles, you can get any four by four quilting design from Kimberbell.com, download it from a direct download from Kimberbell. So as always, I'm using Kimberbell um, project batting. You want a piece that's five by five. I'm gonna hoop it with my mesh cutaway. And I did choose to back each of my pieces with fusible backing. I, I think that that always tends to come out better for me. So do what works for you. But for now, we're going to just sew together four pieces of fabric. How easy is that? So let's go ahead and get started. And um, let me know what colors that you're gonna choose. I can't wait to see your block. Four, four block, four pieces, two and a half inches each. And my shirt today, since we're not doing a snowman or a penguin or anything, I wore my Don't Let Anyone Dull Your Sparkle shirt. This is from uh, Designs by Juju. There's one little applique piece. I recall it was an applique and I used um, metallic uh, thread on the sparkle and then I added a whole bunch of gold little uh, rhinestones to it and I also used variegated thread on dull your which I don't know if I would have done that again it's kind of hard to see maybe because of the pink but don't let anyone dull your sparkle ever be you Quick note that if you are using directional fabric, you would want to lay it out first so that you can see the direction. You wouldn't want, you know, like that or even upside down flowers, whatever. So um, just make sure to check your layout before you get started sewing the blocks together. Okay, so the sew the top two pieces together and then the bottom two pieces together using a, four, a quarter inch seam allowance and then we're going to press open the seams. I should mention that the directions from Kimberbell just say press seams. It doesn't say what way I did mine open. Do what works for you. So once you have your two pieces we are going to sew the two pieces together for four square blocks. Alright, so once you have your four squares all sewn together and seams opened up or however you're going to do your seams, then it's time to quilt it. So I should point out that I am going to do the regular block by block method, um, even though I'm using a CBT clear blue tile quilting design, I'm still going to use the regular block by block method because both were included with our USB stick. And the reason for that is because then um, we'll have the placement and the tack down of the batting and trim and then there will be the outline of our placement stitch for our main fabric and that's where we will put this right in. I'll go over it all but you've probably done it before. Very simple to do block by block method this way. Um, or you could do the CBT version. You could use your tile and uh, mark it. We've already got our center point. We can see the center from the four squares, but you know, however you want to do it, but I'm going to show how I'm doing it.
Okay, if you're doing the block by block method, then you will have already gotten to this point where you have tacked down your batting and trimmed it. And then we have a replacement stitch for our main fabric. And that's where we are going to add in our block. So make sure that it's going the direction that you want it to be. And then you're just going to fit it right into that the placement stitches here. Nice and simple. And I would go ahead and tape in place if I were you. It's up to you. And then we will run the quilting design. I should mention that once you have your uh, tape in place holding your block, that uh, the next step is to run the basting stitch. And I would recommend bypassing that. It's going to go on the edge of your block. And since we're using this method, I would go ahead and bypass. Uh, so to do that, it's very simple. Let me go back. All right, so this on my machine, it's this plus minus button. And then you just hit the up or down button. Uh, well, down, we will hit, hit the down button to bypass this step and then it goes straight to the quilting. I told you this one would be easy. So our points line up, we've got our quilting, it's got our quarter inch seam allowance all the way around and very cute, very easy, very fast. Mm -hmm. 